Thank you, Tullius. If it please the procurator to his imperial majesty, Tiberius Caesar, the high priest and the Sanhedrin request your endorsement of the sentence. They are also desirous that the sentence be executed this day, before the hour of their Sabbath. Their Sabbath. <clears throat> Can you imagine a whole nation that takes one day off every seven days because their God commands it? Tell them to wait, I'll be down in my own time. Now well, listen to this. <laughs> the great Sanhedrin, in its wisdom and concern for justice, has found guilty of blasphemy one Jesus of Nazareth, sorcerer, false prophet, an enemy of Rome, who has deceived the people by pretending to be king of the Jews. What arrogance. The high priest is waiting for you in the courtyard, sir. Well, all we need now is the mob screaming Barabbas. They'll be here, it's early yet. By the seventh hour, the courtyard will be jammed. If I believed in the gods, I'd say that they were smiling on me. You have the prisoner with you? We find him guilty of subverting our nation. He calls himself the Messiah and makes himself equal with God. What is his offense against Rome? If this man were not a criminal, we should not be handing him over to you. What is his crime against Rome? If there is no provocation, you must deal with him yourselves. Only you have the power to execute. If this particular case does not sit well with you, perhaps you should take it to Caesar. That is your suggestion. I'm merely reminding you that it is Caesar's law that forbids Jew to execute Jew. Only Romans can do that. What is his crime against Rome? I need a convincing answer from you. He calls himself our king. Any man claiming to be king is guilty of sedition against Rome. I'll see him inside. By tomorrow morning, all this will be finished when we go back to Caesarea. I can't wait. We shall have to start preparations tomorrow for Caesar's visit. One more demonstration like this morning, and he'll be visiting me at my next post, some cannibal island on the far side of where dragons be. You're not at all what I expected. They tell me you call yourself the King of the Jews. Are you? The King of the Jews. Do you think I am? Or did you hear it said of me by others? If you are a king, perhaps I am a Jew. Your own high priest has handed you over to me. As his king, what have you to say to that? My kingdom is not of this world. But you are a king. I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I came into the world. To give testimony to the truth. Only he who is open to the truth can hear my voice. is truth. You know, I have the power to set you free and the power to crucify you. You have no power whatever to harm me unless my father gives it to you. Who are you?
didn't even ask me to spare him. Do you think Claudia could possibly be right? The superstitions never fail to irritate me. She once woke me out of a sound sleep and said that one of the gods, I've forgotten which one, had spoken to her in a dream and said that we must both get up and walk around the bed four times. My protest brought me nothing. Can you see it? My wife and I, in the middle of the night, walking around the bed four times. I felt a perfect one. I never did get back to sleep. <sighs> Why can't she believe in nothing as I believe in nothing? In my youth, I worshipped all the gods. I never saw a single sign that one of them even heard me. So I stopped begging the gods for success and married Claudia. She had the money and the connections, and I became a success at once. <laughs> well, for this trouble with Barabbas, I'd be inclined to let this creature go. Wasn't John the Baptist also a Galilean? Yes. Herod had his head cut off. Herod, yes. He's here for the Passover, isn't he? Yes. I'm going to let Herod deal with this. This man is technically under his jurisdiction. Let him wrestle with it. To what end? Because I think it would be politic. What if he condemns the man? Who will you offer to the crowd instead of Barabbas? Forgive me, Your Excellency, but I think you're allowing your wife's superstitions to cloud your judgment. Thank you. Barabbas won't disappear. It doesn't matter what you do. I can detect no guilt in this man. I've decided to send him to Herod. He has the authority to pass judgment as to whether or no he's seditious and to sentence him. We're being used. I don't understand what he's doing, but he is using us for his own ends. What will you do if Herod simply sends him back? Well, you do look on the dark side of things, don't you? Yes, but what will you do? I'll face that when it happens. Playing a dangerous game. I've been a soldier for a long time. So have you. Have I ever lost a battle? And Pilate has sent him to me. Apparently so, Your Majesty. Unusually diplomatic of him, wouldn't you say? Indeed, Your Majesty, without precedent. Bring the prisoner and the high priest to me. Is there a good reason why I should hear this case? I believe there is a good reason why you should not, Your Majesty. Hmm? Galilee is this man's home province. You are the tetrarch of Galilee. He has a certain following, and I suggest that you run the risk of antagonizing a great many of your loyal subjects. Any other suggestion? Your Majesty, I suggest that as the case against this man and the evidence has come from Jerusalem, let him be brought before you as a token of respect for the Romans. Then send him back to Pilate. Let the onus of his death, if his death is what they want, rest upon the high priest here in Jerusalem and on Pontius Pilate himself. We'll see. I've heard much about you. I would be very happy to witness a simple demonstration of your wonderful power. Small feat of magic, perhaps. And not a big miracle, a small miracle would do. He can do nothing. He is a false prophet. It might help your case if you were more cooperative. 
He has been found guilty of blasphemy. I don't care for your charges and legalities. My friends want to see this man perform. I want to see things from this man that I've never seen before. Your prisoner not only refuses to perform for me, but he has the ill grace to refuse to reply when I speak to him. You will perform one small miracle for us, won't you? You can hear me, can't you? Look, is he deaf? No. He isn't deaf and he certainly isn't mute. Don't you understand? I'm a king. Your behavior is an affront to royal dignity. He also claims to be a king. A king? You're a king of nothing and a monarch of no one. What a ridiculous king you make. <laughs> Herod sent him back. You were right. For once I wish you were wrong. And don't remind me what I should have done with the rebels. What now? Now that I've left my flank exposed, I've got to make a change in my battle plan. Caesar. 
Any man who claims to be a king defies Caesar. So, I am to crucify your king. We have no king but Caesar. That's enough. Cut him down. Is it accomplished? Accomplished. I want no more accusations from you. I'm your father. You must respect me. Even though you send this man to his death, 
Yes. Better one man should die than a whole nation be torn apart. I have always believed that. I still do. He's on his way to Golgotha. <laughs> 